2021 has definitely been one of the most intense years in my life personally. Obvious reasons aside, me and my partner moved house, we renovated it, we had our first child and we got married, which all left very little free time for my favourite pastime. Taking all of this into account, the Nintendo Switch has been the perfect companion to scratch that gaming itch during baby naps and on flights when I was able to travel. And these are my top five Nintendo Switch games of 2021. Get ready! This was a really cool concept which came out of left field this year and I was really excited about Game Builder Garage when it was announced. I've loved gaming all of my life but I have very little understanding of the process of actually making games. Simply working my way through the hand-holding tutorials gave me a great overview of the sort of logic that goes into game design. I had grand plans to make my own masterpiece in the software, but unfortunately I didn't get any further than completing the tutorials and checking out some of the incredible creations the community had made. I do plan to revisit this again when I have more free time, but the limited time that I did spend with this software this year was really enjoyable and certainly a valuable educational experience. I absolutely loved the original 8-bit influence platformer Shovel Knight and all of its DLC, so I was all in for anything new from the franchise. Pocket Dungeon was a bit of a surprise twist for me, being a roguelike, or roguelite, I guess it is technically, puzzle game. I did actually find the mechanics of the game a little confusing at first, but the game did just enough to keep me coming back, and every time I thought I hit my limit, it constantly threw me a small quality of life feature which kept me motivated until without realising it, I was mastering the game and flying through the early levels that had me ready to quit when I first started. It's a very addictive puzzle game and a perfect example of great game design, teaching the player how to get good at the game without extended tutorials or hand-holding. As an almost 40-year-old lifelong gamer who grew up playing Nintendo, it's kind of an embarrassing blemish on my gaming history that I've never actually played an entry in the Metroid series, but here we are, Metroid Dread this year was my first. There was a lot I found frustrating about the game to be honest, getting stuck with no obvious way forward and having to just blindly shoot rockets everywhere to see if there was a hidden block may be a staple of the franchise, but to newcomers like myself it just comes across as cheap and annoying. But when the game wasn't being cruel to me, I massively enjoyed it. It's got great atmosphere, the controls are super tight, it just feels good to play. I still haven't completed the game yet, mostly because of having significant time gaps between play sessions, and then I can't remember where I need to go next time I pick up the game. But it's one of the few games that I've lost momentum with and still gone back to repeated times now, and I definitely want to try and finish this one, so that alone speaks volumes. Now this is by far the game that I've spent the most amount of time with this year. I love the Mario Golf series, and unfortunately this one isn't without its faults. Nintendo software always has a certain feel of high quality with its first party games. That's not debatable, but some do feel a little bit second tier, if you know what I mean, and Mario Golf Super Rush does very much have that vibe. The story mode felt a little bit underwhelming, and some of the game modes can range from silly rather than fun and frustrating rather than challenging. However, the multiplayer is where I spent most of my time with the game. I live in a different country from where I grew up and where most of my friends still live. I haven't seen much of them recently, if at all. Jumping in on a private online match with everyone while chatting on Discord provided a much appreciated connection to everybody back home. And the regular free content updates to the game never stopped the game feeling interesting and fresh. The lack of polish in some of the game modes can be overlooked when the fundamentals of the game are so solid and the game's been supported so well and I'm sure I'm going to continue to play this one well into 2022.
I absolutely love arcade racing games. And not Forza Horizon style arcade racing games. I mean, Ridge Racer, Daytona, never take your finger off the accelerator for the entire race, drive sideways around corners, level of unrealistic racing games. This is Cruising Blast in a nutshell. I loved the game in the arcades and I was frustrated for many years that Nintendo wouldn't port it to a home console. But in 2021, they did. They added some extra courses, some variations of the courses, some collectibles and unlockables. But at its core, this is just the arcade experience at home, and that's exactly what I wanted. There are a few minor complaints, such as the lack of multiplayer features. You can check my full review of the game that I made earlier in the year if you want to see all my thoughts on it. But when I sat down to make this list and simply thought which game did I enjoy playing the most this year, I couldn't think of anything else that I just had so much fun with. So as odd as it might sound to many people, Cruising Blast is actually my favourite game of 2021. So there we go, my top five for 2021. As I said at the start, it's been a busy year for me personally, so there are a lot of games that I didn't get a chance to play. I actually started this video as a top 10 list, and then I realised that I don't think I actually played 10 games that I feel that passionately about. I have to give an honourable mention to Gunlord X, a Turrican influenced indie platform game that I really did enjoy playing this year, but it actually came out in 2019. So it didn't make the list, but it's definitely worth checking out. Please let me know in the comments what your favourite games of the last year have been. I've been somewhat out of the loop, so if there's any killer games that I've missed, I can add them to my backlog and maybe get rounds of them for the honourable mentions in 2023. Thanks for watching the video, wishing you all the best for 2022 and beyond. This is Kutsky signing out, keeping the games alive. Mm -hmm.